so hello everyone welcome to the part 2 of investigator site file so in the previous session in the part 1 we saw what exactly is isf what is the difference between tmf and isf and we looked into four important sections of the isf now let's unravel the further sections so a small recap in the part 1 we have seen what exactly is isf and the requirements according to the regulatory and icf gcp we also saw the difference between tmf and isf and we saw section 1 to 4 of the isf if you haven't then please go ahead and see the part 1 and then only, only then continue into part 2 in part 2 we will see each and every document in section 4 to 15 and then we'll see what is the significance that an isf brings into the clinical trials so let's start so let's focus on the contents of the isf and we will see section 5 so section 5 of the isf contains investigator brochure so it contains investigator brochure as well as the signature page on the ib the ib receipt as well as if there are any package insert for the ip and certificate of analysis so all these documents are filed in section 5 of the isf next is section 6 which contains all the document regarding regulatory authority so if there is any correspondence between the regulatory authority and the sponsor or the cro those communication or correspondence is filed in section 6 as well as dcgi approval is required for the trial then once the trial is approved then it is registered into clinical trial registry of india ctri so that ctri document is present in section 6 as well as if the ip is imported then the ip import documents are filed in section 6 then documents such as investigator understanding form fda 1572 3454 and fda 3455 so i would like you to comment what exactly is the role of 1572 so if you know just go ahead and comment next session we'll look irb and iic documents so section 7 is dedicated to irb or iic so all the documents regarding the institutional ethics committee or the review board is filed here so it starts from the registration of the ec the composition of the ethics committee the approval of the ec then the sop of the ethics committee and the submission and the approval letter for this particular clinical trial again all the notification done during the clinical trial all the ethics committee interim or annual progress report or analysis report are filed here and the final report of the clinical trial that is notified to the ec that notification has also to be filed in section 7 so any and all document regarding the ethics committee itself and the ethics committee's review oversight in the clinical trial for that particular trial is filed in section 7 now moving on to section 8 section 8 contains document for informed consent so section 8 con uh, contains master icf which is in english language and the regional icf so all the icfs being used in the study are filed in section 8 it contains icf in english in regional languages such as marathi hindi kannada tamil telugu and in foreign countries the other language documents in this section there are also translation and back translation certificate and all the versions of the isf if they are amendment so those amended documents are also filed in section 8 so again i would like you to comment the importance of back translation translation certificate everyone knows but also comment what is the importance of back translation certificates moving on to section 9 section 9 contains the subject diaries so all the subject diaries in english language as well as regional languages are filed here again the translation and back translation certificates are filed here if there are any questionnaires also then again those are filed in this particular section so all the do document or the questionnaires or diaries which are to be used by the subject are filed in isf in section 9 the next is section 10 section 10 is dedicated to safety information so all the essays occurred in the clinical trial the essay log the essay report the adverse event report 
then safety notification of all the adverse event then seoms sosars periodic safety update reports and notification and communication from the sponsor to the ethics committee of all the seoms these are filed in section 10 of the safety so as a clinical research coordinator you must have filed all the seoms and notified it to the ethics committee so all those notification and acknowledgement regarding to the safety are filed in section 10 as well as if there is any essay in your trial or if there is any SA log or AE log, it is filed in section 10 under safety. Then we look into section 11. Section 11 contains monitoring records. So all the documents regarding monitoring starting from the feasibility records, the site visit log, the site visit report, starting from site selection visit, site initiation visit, any interim monitoring visit for the audit or any close out visit. All those reports you would find in section 11 as well as during uh, monitoring if there are any uh, confirmation letter or there are agenda for the monitoring the follow-up letters so all this document regarding monitoring is filed in section 11. Now let us see section 12. So section 12 contains document regarding to the laboratory. So these are document regarding the site laboratory the local laboratory as well as the central laboratory. In a lot of trial samples are sometimes shipped to the central laboratory and sometimes they are carried out in the local laboratory so the cv mrc of the lab head is filed in this particular section as well as the lab accreditation is also filed in this particular section so all the documents regarding a laboratory the normal reference ranges okay these are filed in section 12 as well as the lab manual that is to be used during clinical trial, the lab kit requisition form, the destruction certificates. So all those related to the laboratory are filed in section 12. Then looking to section 13, so it contains section for case report form. Okay, so all the current version of the uh, electronic case report form and the previous version of electronic case report forms are filed here. So electronically you must have used uh, various ECRFs which are coded into inform viva or any other thing so these are printed and filed in this particular section and the ecrf guidelines which are used are also filed here and ecrf tracking log is also filed here so i want you to comment again here that have you ever read the ecrf guidelines and has it helped you to enter the data in proper format so please go ahead and comment then we'll look into section 14 Again, it is one of the important section. It contains agreement. So all the agreement between the sponsor, the CRO and the site are filed here. Agreements such as confidentiality agreement, clinical trial agreement, the contracts involved in the clinical trial between all the stakeholders, the insurance of the clinical trial, the indemnity uh, documents are filed here. And one of the important documents here is the clinical trial agreement. So in this particular clinical trial agreement, you would find all the financial repercussions or the financial aspects of the clinical trial that has been decided so based on that you carry out all the process and you uh, bill it to the sponsor or the CRO okay so if you are a new CRC go ahead and read the CTA so you would understand how the clinical trial works and what are the financial aspects of it and uh, how a particular sponsor provides bills and requirements to the site and what is their agreement upon so go ahead and read this agreement these are very important again section 15 contains investigational product okay so information regarding the ip so ip handling the shipping record the ip dispensation the ip accountability again the storage of the ip the temperature records the decoding and unblinding so these sections uh, these documents regarding the ip are filed in section 15 so go ahead and uh, check uh, this documents and understand the importance of it. Okay, so these were the important 15 documents that you can find in an ISF. Now, if you are an experienced person, you would understand that there are again a lot of section which I have omitted, but these sections are not as pertinent as this first 15 session. Okay, so these sections uh, clearly would help you understand what exactly is the nature of the ISF and what documents are required there are also other documents which are required but those are not as prominent as this and whenever you go to a clinical trial interview or whenever you have to describe the isf 
these first 50, 15 sessions would suffice. If you want to be thorough, then please go ahead and read the section 8 of the ICH GCP and you would see documents which are required before, during and after the trial and you would get a very complete idea of the entire ISF structure. So now that we have seen the entire sections of the ISF, what exactly it means and what are the documents that goes into it. Now let us understand what is the significance of this investigator site file. So when it comes to ISF, the first and foremost significance is that it has all the essential documents which satisfies the regulatory sponsor and ICGCP requirement. That is the fundamental of it. Next thing is that this particular ISF or all the documents in the ISF helps us display the conduct of the clinical trial, how the trial is managed, the integrity of the, all the documents and data as well as recreation of all the data which plays a critical role in the audit and inspection. So whenever there is audit or any ins inspection, they would look at the ISF and all the documents and through that they would understand what are the dispensing pattern, what is the notification status, have you done any reconsenting and what is the status of the entire trial. So that is why the ISF documentation are important. Next thing would be the ISF would serve as a physical record of the trial management and documentation at your site. So how do you display that your trial is being conducted according to the requirement and do you have any physical records? So that record is in the form of ISF. And also this is underrated but you would have to appreciate that ISF also plays a very important role in the outcome of the trial. Because until and unless there are all the essential documents present in the ISF at all sites across the trial you wouldn't have the final outcome of the trial. So outcome of the trial is also determined by the completeness of the ISF. So these are the significance of the ISF. So I hope I was able to help you understand what exactly ISF is. Thank you for watching this video. So please like, share and subscribe to this channel and help us reach a lot of people and help them understand all the clinical research concepts. Thank you.